South Korea, the brilliant Roy Jones fought his way to an apparent... And indeed, the sport of amateur boxing still in some ways recovering from the atrocity of 1988, when in Seoul, South Korea, the brilliant Roy Jones fought his way to an apparent gold medal, but left without one after the atrocious decision that gave his gold medal to a Korean fighter. Ten years ago, Roy Jones was victimized by the most unconscionable decision in Olympic boxing history. To this day, his gold medal match versus Korean Park Si-hun is marred by mysterious allegations of corruption. And though Roy took home the award as the game's most outstanding boxer, he left Korea without his much-deserved gold medal. It, it was almost like a dream. So much hard work trying to get there, and now it's all becoming a reality. Everything that I was working for was falling right into place until I got to the end. Roy Jones building up a tremendous lead and should be 15 seconds away from the goal. I knew I had him, but then me and the referee were standing there waiting, and I hear these Koreans start screaming at this table. I said, no, I can't believe this. The referee, the referee was even whispering to me. He said, you, they got to be out of their mind. He said, I, I just don't believe this is even about to happen. Boy. It's tough, man. It's very really tough. On point, 3-2, in the blue corner. Well, there it is. Park Sihan has stolen the belt. Got all that night, all the next night, and all the next night. I had three nights straight, man. Couldn't believe it, man. I, I just couldn't believe it. Of the five judges at ringside, three had voted for the Korean. Shortly after the fight, a judge from Morocco made some revealing comments. After the fight, we went out and cornered the Moroccan judge, the Slarabi, and he told us that he thought Jones had won so big that he voted for Park because he didn't want to embarrass the host country. He thought Jones would win four to one. That was his story. The 1988 Seoul Olympics became a watershed embarrassment to amateur boxing and brought to light the sport's desperate need for change. The three offending judges in the Jones bout were temporarily suspended and computerized scoring was introduced for the 92 games. And with the fall of the Berlin Wall, the secret files of the East German Stasi police became public, portions of which provided further evidence that boxing officials in Seoul had been bribed. Citing this new evidence, and the documented post-fight comments of the Moroccan judge, an appeal of the Jones Park bout was launched more than eight years after the fact. The IOC investigated, found that, um, that uh, uh, the judges hadn't been bribed. Uh, and then finally, there was one judge who supposedly was quoted as having said that he voted for the Korean athlete because he felt sorry for him. He'd been beaten so badly. Not true. He said he never said that. In fact, he never did the interview. She knows what, that we did not talk to this man. Apparently, she knows that the French press did not talk to this man. But here's this blabbermouth Mor Moroccan going around telling everybody what he did. But she knows it's not true. That's what he said, and that's what uh, the IOC accepted, and he made his report very clear. So the appeal was denied, but the IOC, over time, was so impressed with Roy Jones Jr., he was given the highest other order the IOC can give, uh, the Olympic order, and I had the great privilege of presenting it to him in New York. I understand that's good, it's a very prestigious award, but you gotta remember, my goal was not to go over there and win an Olympic order. <laughs> my goal was to go over there and win a gold medal. Where's the gold medal? I still don't have. And while he still doesn't have his gold medal, Roy Jones has gone on to become a three-division professional champion. A far cry from gold medalist Park Si Hun, who's a gym teacher outside of Seoul. So 10 years later, what is the legacy of Roy Jones's Olympic experience? He's just a part of the history. Just another, uh, just another page of the history. Just another, another fine boxer who was robbed. He's not the first. He won't be the last.
Still to come, Roy Jones against Lou Duvall here in Madison Square Garden. Jones trying to add another sensational performance to the two that he has produced within the past year. Back live with 1968 Olympic super heavyweight gold medalist George Foreman. George, uh, earlier at the beginning of the telecast, Larry and I spoke about the new Roy Jones suddenly so much more active in promoting his own career and taking those fights which become available when he can take them. What do you make of that? <laughs> Look, he was, I think when he was deprived of that gold medal, he was also deprived, he deprived himself of that smile. I've been there, done that. What you want to do is compete in the Olympics. The last thing you want is to cry about winning or losing. That's why we have the Goodwill Games. Thank God for the Goodwill Games. So you think that for nine years he was a joyless fighter because of the sadness he felt about the Olympics, and now he's finally gotten over it. Yeah, he's restored. He, you know, the old saying is that he restores my soul. The guy's soul has been restored. I think he's a happy man because of it. He's successful, and why not be happy to, to be just a part of the Olympics? And a happy Roy Jones is a tough man to face in the ring, as he's certainly shown in his last two appearances, Larry, the first-round destruction of Montel Griffin last August, and then the body punch knockout of Virgil Hill this past April. Supposing that ferocious Roy Jones comes out once again, does Lou Duvall have the firepower and the ability to weather that early assault and make a fight of it? We can hope that R.J. shows up. R.J. being the bad Roy Jones, as he calls himself, the Terminator. And, and that LDV, the bad Lou Duvall, also shows up. That would be a lot of fun. But realistically, after those two Jones performances, those annihilations, we can expect future opponents to throw stink bombs at him, to just try to frustrate him and hope something good happens later in the fight. Del Val may be equipped to fight that kind of a fight. He's a southpaw. He has some skills. He's clever. He's determined. He's fighting at home. He may have made one mistake, however, having sparred so many rounds with Roy Jones, he came out here and said, well, he doesn't like to get hit because he doesn't take a good punch, because he doesn't have much of a heart, just the sort of thing that will bring out the RJ and Roy Jones. At least that's the way LM sees it, <laughs> Jim. You didn't call me JL. JL. I was going to tell you to watch out for JL. He's a bad dude. He's still only 19. Um, well. Certainly Lou Duvall feels after his 38 rounds of sparring with Roy Jones a few years ago that he has no reason to be scared of Roy. Lou, after his upbringing, doesn't think he has any need to be scared of anything. There are a lot of hard guys here to root for him. They are his boyhood buddies. I was raised on the second floor. Um, you know, it was tough, but... This is, where we, this is where we used to live at. Lou Delval, like so many boxers, was born a street fighting man. His initiation battles began and nearly ended in Queens' dangerous QB City projects. A life of violence with a grim ending seemingly set in stone. I've been in a lot of trouble. There was a lot of drugs out there. There was a lot of fights. There was a lot of... It was a lot of, you know, a lot of bad things going on over there, you know, a lot of shootouts. And surely, sooner or later, Duvall would fall in one of those shootouts. After all, look at what happened to his friends. Well, I used to hang out with a guy named Edgar. He, he died. He got killed in a drug war with somebody. My other friend Clifford, he went to jail. My other friend Johnson, he's like on drugs. I don't know where he's at. But like, those are the three guys I really hung out with. and. You know, they either in jail, dead, or, you know, on drugs. This right here is called the Avenue. That's where all the, you know, the crazy guys stay at. You have all the problems, you know, all the fights and all that. And all that did take control. Delval dodged death and drugs, but not crime. He was nabbed for robbery and locked away for nearly a year at age 15. When I came out of the um, juvenile detention, I made a promise to myself that I was going to be a different person and a better person. Uh, like I tell you, growing up in the neighborhood that I grew up in, you know, you start thinking the same way your friends think and you think it's the right way to be. I used to be down with a lot of crazy things that I shouldn't have been down with, but right now I look back at it and I say I was a fool oh, because oh, it was all wrong. Yeah, baby, the J's still in, the J's still in, the J's there, oh! 
Duvall's mom had seen enough of his incorrigible behavior and moved Lou away from the life-threatening Queensbridge projects. He was sent across the East River to the Bronx to live with his grandmother. There, in the more hospitable Morris Park, he discovered a boxing gym. I learned how to fight in the streets, and that's how I'm, you know, I always thought I was going to be a fighter. I always knew it was meant for me. That's my son right there. With a new goal, motivation, and only eight months of ring experience, Duval instantly became a homeboy hero by winning New York's Golden Gloves Championship. Combination by Duval. Duval! Lou's sister, Melissa, was one of his biggest fans, and with her brother's inspiration, set her own sights on the same prize. They became the first and only brother-sister champs in Golden Gloves history. Bell, you coming, right? Front row seats, right? I got my tickets already. My sister's the best woman fight in the world, and I think that she um, takes boxing to another level. Um, she's... She's the Roy Jones of women's boxing, you know what I mean? As Melissa developed her own career, ironically, she met Roy Jones, and three years ago, arranged for her then up-and-coming brother to spar with him. I helped myself spar with Roy. If I could hold my own with Roy Jones, then I'm at that championship level, and Roy helped me in that sense of becoming champ. And though Lou won a vacant world title last September, it is still those 38 rounds of sparring with Roy Jones that most pumps his growing confidence. I always dreamed of this, you know, coming back to my own neighborhood and letting people know that I made it and I became son. Lou Delval is a long way from the challenges of QBC. As tonight, he shares center stage with Roy Jones in a third New York borough, Manhattan, home to Madison Square Garden, and home tonight to the dreams Lou Delval wouldn't allow to be snuffed out. And we bring you back live to Madison Square Garden for the tale of the tape between Roy Jones and Lou Delval, and once again, some excellent New York cuisine sampling between the time of the weigh-in and tonight's fight. Jones putting on only 9 pounds, 175 to 184. Deval putting on 17 pounds in the just a little bit more than 24 hours since the weigh-in. You can see that Deval has a height advantage of an inch. He's one year older than Roy Jones. The reach is equal. Two fairly similar physical specimens, although, as usual, Roy presents the more imposing image in the ring. Punch that numbers, Larry. Uh, these numbers come from both of their fights against Virgil Hill. As you can see, Jones is the more economical and the more accurate puncher, and of course, he's the bigger power puncher. Jabs, Delval depends on the jab. Jones, for Jones, that was a very high output of jabs against Hill. Rules of the, of the bout with uh, New York's Harold Letterman. <laughs> the Roy Jones Jr. Louis Delval fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the standardized rules of boxing. Bounced off of the buckle holding the ropes in the corner. 27 wins, one loss, no draws, 19 KOs. The only loss was to Virgil Hill in Hill's home state of North Dakota in Grand Forks. That's the equivalent of going to Russia to fight a winter war. Honey Boy. And now Roy Jones will enter 
with an elaborate suite of music. All choreographed by Roy Jones himself. Rapper DMX here to accompany Roy into the ring. Whatever inhibitions Roy Jones may have once felt, I think with the coming of Prince Hamed, they've all gone. <laughs> Yeah, the Prince has loosened everybody up a little. We've got a ring full of smoke. This is not smoke gainer, this is real smoke. Breakout on Jones's pathway into the ring. Security guards going to work. Madison Square Garden officials were concerned about this entrance for precisely this reason. And to their credit, they added extra security to control any incidents of the kind that you just saw. Jim, on a scale of 10, how do you rate this entrance? I'm putting you on the spot. As among Jones' entrances, it's a 9, okay? But if you're going to ask me to compare it to the Prince, it's a work in progress. 36 wins, one loss, no draws, 31 KOs for the man regarded by many as the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the sport. 10 and 1, seven knockouts in championship fights. The only loss was the disqualification against Montel Griffin in spring of last year for hitting Griffin after he was already down. And we remind you to enjoy this fight via HBO's comprehensive interactive boxing website at www.hbo.com slash boxing. Check how you score the fight against the scoring of fans across the country. Analyze statistics from the CompuBox experts as they emerge and participate in live chats. Another perfect segue to the live chat man of the ring, Michael Buffer. Michael Buffer unable to see our cue because there's so many people in the ring. And now his Ladies microphone. And gentlemen, All right. Mirad Mohammed, Eminem Sports with Square Ring Incorporated, along with Cedric Kushner Promotions, in association with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Present 12 rounds of boxing for the unification of the WBC and WBA Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. 
sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission. Chairman, Mel Southard. Commissioner in attendance, Rose Trentman. First Executive Director, Tony Russo. Executive Director, Jim Paulzanello. Director of Boxing, Bob Duffy. Deputy Commissioners at ringside, Mike Pascal and Steve Aguinto. Timekeeper, Kathy Paulillo. Chief Physician at ringside, Dr. Billy Lathan. Attending Physicians, Dr. Richard Estrico and Dr. Gerald Varlata. WBA Supervisor, Murray Sleep. WBC Supervisor, Steve Crossan. The scoring will be done by three judges at ringside. Scoring on the 10-point must system, yeah. they are Marty Dinkin from California, Dwayne Ford from Nevada, and Fred Ucci of New York. And when the bell rings, your referee also from New York is Jim Santa. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Mecca of Boxing, New York City's Madison Square Garden. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing burgundy trim with white, and weighing 175 pounds. In 1988, he won a silver medal in the Olympics, and now, as a professional, he has 36 victories, 31 by knockout, with only one controversial loss. And he has picked up four world titles. Ladies and gentlemen, from Pensacola, Florida, presenting the four-time world champion and reigning and defending WBC light heavyweight champion of the world, Roy Jones, Jr. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black, trimmed with gold, and weighing 175 pounds. His professional record, 27 victories, 19 by knockout, with only one defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, representing the pride of all Puerto Rico Americans from the Bronx and New York City, here is the reigning and defending WBA light heavyweight champion of the world, Lou Honeyboy Devole. Listen to me at all times. Let's touch gloves and have a good, clean fight. Let's go. Touch gloves. Let's go. Come on. There you go. Let's go. Bad blood. These two guys don't like each other. That was not a love kiss. Jones says Daval is a traitor for never having indicated to him when he was sparring with him that he'd like to fight him someday. Daval says that Jones is conceited stuck up and needs to be brought down to size. You can see that Deval's a southpaw. Jones has only fought one southpaw previously in his professional career. First round knockout of Antoine Bird. Deval's chances, if you want to make them a lot, he's got to stay busy, fight three minutes every round. Don't allow this guy to set up or do anything. And of course, Roy Jones just be himself. Go out there and make sure he doesn't give this guy any confidence. Jones told us he wants to develop a rhythm that will tempt Deval into throwing his pet punch, his left cross, straight left hands. Sometimes he loops him. Jones says, if Deval will throw that left at me, I'll find a way to counter it. Deval already threw one of them to the body. I imagine Jones is well, waiting for him to try it again. In 
in the first Montel Griffin fight before the disqualification and in a previous bout against Mike McCallum, Jones showed a tendency to sometimes stand against the ropes and take punishment. Deval will be hoping for that. He needs to stay out of the center of the ring. Deval shaking his head no at Jones's right hand, and Jones leads with it again. But Jones did what he should have done earlier. Take the confidence away from this guy. Don't allow yourself to be hit first. Someone's got to land the first punch. Always let it be you. Roy threw a lot of jabs. An uncharacteristic jab out put a close to 20 per round in his last fight against Virgil Hill. But against the southpaw, Del Valle, he may not use the jab at all. And you can see the taunting that's already going on between the two fighters in the ring. Deval is not able to stop Jones from jumping on him, but he's got to make certain that he gets right back as soon as Roy Jones finishes. Be the first one back. Right hand to the body by Jones. Landed in the middle of the chest. Little bit of a tactical battle so far because both men would rather counter than lead. DeVal is having the best of it because he's the heavier guy. When you want to throw a lot of punches early on, it's to the bigger guy's advantage because he's got that weight to make you a little tired. Hard left hand by Jones at the end of round one. Right, my bottom, bottom part of it. There you go. All right. That's good. That's good. That's good. Right. Good work. Good work. Deep breath. Yeah, that baby. Deep breath. Nice and relaxed. Nice and natural. Right. Okay. I'm thinking. I am a good dog. No, you look very good. Very good. Don't worry. Very good. Yeah. He's ready to fly over. Right. Faints. Faints around. Nice and relaxed, a lot of faints. Okay. End of the round. Roy Jones throws a right and follows it up. Let's go seconds. With a leaping left. That first round was more about personal stuff between them for old time's sake. Perhaps they'll settle down to a real prize fight from here on out. Well, it'll be interesting to see when punches start to fly. Deval only threw 31 punches in round one. Jones only threw 26. That's a very low output for both fighters. But both fighters like to pick their opportunities. Neither one is the kind of warrior who's going to throw 75, 80, 90 punches in a round. Now, Deval is doing the kind of fight that he should be doing. Always fight. Never stop and wait around and see the action. Body punch from Jones. Let's go, fellas. Let's go. And a right hand by Jones as they stepped out of that clinch. And Deval tries to come back at him and manages to pin Jones against the ropes, but lands only to the body. Three body shots, four body shots by Deval as he leaned in against Roy there. Now remember, Roy Jones has added to his repertoire this straight left to the body now, so Deval has better be careful. Chopping right hand over the top by Jones. There's a little bruise on Deval's right cheek under his right eye. Right, box, let go. The two men's heads let go. came together right, on, right, over box. here against the left ropes. Deval swelled in the second round of his battle against Virgil Hill in Grand Forks, North Dakota, under the right eye, just as is the case again tonight. Roy Jones is looping with his... Uh, left hand now, straight left, should be straight, but he's looping with it. Looking for one good shot, a knockout. No punches, no punches, stop! Step back, good job, good job, let's go. I think we can see we're not going to see any left jabbing out of Roy tonight. No, Roy Jones has been the most and just successful as I fighter. Say it, just as I say it, he throws a left jab. Yeah, the most ahead. successful fighter in his class without a left jab. 
generally it's a necessity to have a left jab and it's been a right jab, so to speak. Yep. Now Jones in a southpaw stance. Suddenly Roy switches into southpaw stance. But he doesn't switch and jab. Roy, look out, Roy. Box it, Roy. Let's go. Watch that. Watch your heads. Watch your heads. Devon is doing a good job. Roy Jones shuts everything down once he back touches the rope. Jones still in the southpaw stance. And Devon, of course, unaccustomed to fighting against a southpaw, backs up and tries to get a look at what Roy is doing. Hard left cross out of the southpaw stance by Jones. And he starts jabbing with the right hand. Mean intentions on those punches. What I like on your sound song. Right, the road to wherever is paved with mean intentions in this game. Didn't land anything. Right here. Okay. Uh, okay, you, you told us so. No, that's good. Look at jab on your southpaw side, though. Make him go for it. Keep yeah. working that jab. I got you, brother. Yeah, move. Keep jabs in the high. Little jab. Little fast jab. Yeah, yeah. And feel it. You got to do it. He's watching. You know, it's the stick. Stay on that little finger. Hey, let it come natural. Stay on that. Well, it'll be interesting to see if Jones comes out in his natural conventional stance or if he comes out to fight a full round as a southpaw. He's starting off in his natural stance. But you heard Alton Murkison, his trainer, telling him to keep throwing the right jab once he switches southpaw, and there he goes. And Deval immediately attacks when Jones switches feet and tries to land the left over the top. Straight right jab lands for Deval. Jones retaliating with a left across the top. Larry Merchant, you were highly critical of Oscar De La Hoya last summer when he went to a southpaw stance against Brunel Whitaker. What do you think of Jones doing the same thing here? Well, we had never seen De La Hoya doing it before. We have seen Roy Jones do this before. Sometimes it can be an act of panic because you haven't been able to do what you normally do. I thought that was the case at the time with, with De La Hoya. But let's see how effective Roy Jones is at it. At what, why would the most dominant fighter on the planet uh, beneath the heavyweight division have to change for the other guy? Why doesn't he make the other guy change to him? Well, this guy's an athlete. Basketball, football, anything. So it's probably natural for him to do things that no one expects him to do. And you saw the exchange along the ropes. Delval getting the better of the first half of the exchange. And then Roy Jones turning the tables as it closed out. If the ball is able to come back and jab or do something after Jones finishes his stuff, he can be in good shape as this fight wears on. Jones with a right hook out of his southpaw stance and the left cross there. Deval trying to indicate with his facial expressions to Jones that Roy's not getting anything done with this unusual strategy of having switched to full-time southpaw in the third round. And Jones trying to leap and land that left across the top. You know, the way Roy Jones fights, uh, it's so unorthodox, throwing so few jabs, it almost seems that it's, it doesn't matter which side he's fighting from. He's an athlete. Some of these guys are so athletic that you know, generally most fighters start off in a softball position anyway and they have to be corrected. So he probably spent a lot of years doing that in the gym anyway. You know, if he was a writer, he could he could write score from left to right or right to left and, and write a great book either way. <laughs> So this is the only time that the foul is effective when he keeps Roy Jones against the rope. Get him there and keep him there. It takes a lot of energy to do that. No punches. No punches, fellas. No punches. Billy, just watch ahead, okay? Let's go. Round three coming to a close. There haven't been a lot of clean punches landed. There's been a lot of mean glares between two fighters who clearly are 
are not friends. Well, DelVal is trying to frustrate Roy Jones. He may not be winning the fight, but he is causing some frustration. Put up, baby. Okay. All right. My God. You got him frustrated My. now. You got him in check. He ain't doing nothing. You're freezing him, okay? You do. I keep the bottle off him. Faint him if you don't want to do anything. If you don't want to throw the punch, faint him. Deep breath. Deep breath. Doing good. Okay. A little more faint and a little more jabbing. Keep the left of the body. Keep the jab. Let me keep the gold on it, though. Left of the body, left of the jab. Right. Watch it. When you're ready. All right. DelVal calls himself Honey Boy because Honey in the gym he grew up in was the ability to take a punch. There you see Roy Jones landing a clean left hand that's done a lot of damage to a lot of fighters. DelVal took it. He got a taste of Roy Jones' honey. DelVal in the third round only threw 22 punches. That activity level is not going to win him the fight. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through the first three? Jim, I've got it gritted up from 30 to 27, Roy Jones Jr. Meanwhile, the crowd goes crazy as DeVal begins scoring in the corner. He's throwing punches. He's not the one holding on, though. Roy Jones has his hand cuffed under there. And referee Jim Santa just pulling the two fighters apart. No warning on either side. Jones thought he was being held. You heard George Foreman say, no, no, Roy was doing the holding. And Deval had his best flurry of the fight. Body shots from Jones. Deval corner told him, if you're not going to do anything else, just faint. But Roy Jones, if you faint and don't do something, we'll clean your house. It's not a good idea to faint. Let go, Roy. Come on, bud. Box foul. Let's go. You box the way out. Let's go. That's it. Good job. Good job. I've always thought of Jones as one of the masters of fainting other fighters. Deval said he's susceptible to faints. You can move him around by fainting him. Yeah, but Roy Jones fights such a good fight with his eyes that you're not going to trick him much. He's doing the fainting. Jones is throwing so many hard punches. It'll be interesting to see how his conditioning holds up over the course of the fight. He's taking this fight on extremely short notice given his past habits as a businessman. And another thing is developed into a light heavyweight fight. There's no longer that middleweight thing happening now. So this is not good for Roy Jones. He's going to have to keep his quickness up, not go into the corners and allow this big guy to hit him in the side. Good body punch by Roy Jones. Another good body punch. Jones going to the middle of DelVal's belly with success. Over and over. He's landed about five excellent body shots in this round. And that's what it sets up when you land to the body. Leroy Neiman, the artist, is here. And sometimes these two fighters look like they're posing for him. <laughs> Roy Jones just takes such pot shots at you that you've got to be active. You've got to be doing something all the time. Otherwise, you can get hurt. Tucker ain't going to take no chances. You lay it on it, Tim. Wait till you get the right hands in. Towel, wipe my face. Put my thumb to you, baby. I ain't. I got you. I got you. I got you. He risked his mouth through that. I go. Why don't you hit him every once in a while like you hit him? This third can't go take no chances and come in. He probably fighting defense. He know. He already know what's waiting on him. Yeah, stick with your game. Baby, baby, listen to me. Listen to me. Left hand hard body set it up for the behind. Okay, he's falling back on it. That's it. Deep breath, baby. There you see DelVal with his best punch. Clean shot on the jaw, and now he holds, hits, and tries to rough Jones up. That was early in the round. Jones dominated the second half of the round. Hard right hand. 
oddly enough, to the right side of DelVal's jaw. This is a fight that in some passages is so awkward and unorthodox, you don't know which punch is gonna land on which side of the fighter, George. <laughs> And Harold Letterman's card still clean as he gives every round so far to Roy Jones. George? I agree. <laughs> give it up, give him up. The thing that's so good about Roy Jones, though he has good power shots on the top, continuously goes back to the body. Yeah, I was just getting ready to say, the best work he's done tonight are those body shots. It's been 16 months since Jones's disqualification against Montel Griffin in the first Griffin fight. Coming into the night, he had fought 12 minutes and 42 seconds total in those 16 months. So he's already fought more tonight for a longer period of time than was the case in the whole 16 months since his only loss. And we haven't seen the southpaw stance since the end of the third round. So Jones is going back to his conventional style now after having given DelVal something to think about with a round and a half of southpaw fighting. Now he's got his eyes wide open on DelVal and landing with those straight left hands. Jones with some showmanship and a repeated series of right hands And DeVal trying to indicate that Jones isn't doing damage, but he's landing and landing again. I don't know if this is a dance or a fight or, or both. A dancing fight. <laughs> well, Roy brought an entourage of rap musicians with him tonight, and he's trying to impress them on both fronts. Footwork and fist work. Strange stuff going on in there. Good straight left hand to the body by Duvall at times. Once a guy goes off on you a few times, just go back to his body. Don't get excited. Yeah, Duvall somehow got to ignore all of Jones's unconventional brilliance and stick to the business at hand. I think he'd do well to stay with the body, George. Yeah, uh, Roy Jones is landing some effective shots now. It's a matter of uh, DeVal just waiting to be cleaned out if he doesn't get, a, get active. Can't wait around on Roy Jones. Five seconds, five seconds, two seconds. Done! Good job. There we see a an Apache dance of violence before he punches. Let's go second, and later in the round, he lands a clean right hand right there. Well, you heard Joe DiGuardia, Lou Duvall's manager, telling him that he thinks he's doing well. But Duvall only threw 26 punches in the fifth round. He's Jones threw twice as many. Yeah, he's averaging 10 punches landed per round. That won't get it. But Duvall, as he put it, although he's making by far the biggest purse of his career, a total of $850,000, and he's fighting for respect, and you can see he does have passion in there, and he is fighting for his hometown fans. And going this far with Roy Jones in itself is an accomplishment off of Jones' recent form. Work, come on, work your way out yourself. Come on, work your way. Let you got to be dedicated to your back. training at this point. You're not winning a fight, but something can happen if you keep your stance, use your jab. You can make things happen. You got to believe that if you're a boxer. First light heavyweight unification bout in 15 years. 
since Michael Spinks unified the title against White Braxton in Atlantic City in 1983. Roy Jones is throwing some really hard jabs here for him. We've seen him in the past throw some of those 12-inch jams that Ooh. were really faint. That's some of the best body punches I've seen thrown in that weight division. That was a vicious body shot. Of course, you remember that Jones knocked Virgil Hill out with a single body shot to the left side of Hill's ribcage. Three-punch combination with the right hand. Roy says, oh, you don't think I hurt you with that? We'll take some more. Now, when you start throwing reckless punches like that to the body, you run into the elbow and you end up hurting your own hand. Jones may get his right hand in a little problem. I think Duvall's spending entirely too much time offering commentary on Roy's work and not enough time working himself. Yeah, well, a fight can be seen as, as a violent dialogue, but they're having words as well as fistic dialogue. It's just that Duvall is not answering with his fists often Ooh. enough. Another body shot from Jones. It makes Duvall jumps in, jumps in the air. The ball's only thrown 10 punches so far in this round. With that kind of power, Roy Jones belongs in the heavyweights. Hard right hand inside by Jones. He keeps this up. He's going to start painting the ball's face as the rounds go by. And you can see there's swelling under the ball's left eye now. We go with the swelling under his right eye. So Jones has begun to make the ball's cheekbones expand. Protect yourself. And again, Jones switches to the southpaw stance. So once again, the tactical wrinkle, which obviously he put in just for this fight. Three seconds. Jones jabbing with the right hand and crossing with the left. I know he's picking it up. He's picking it too much. He's picking it too much. He's picking it too much. Right. Picking it too much. Right. I don't want you laying there. Keep those hands up, very up high. Let them come straight out from high. He's getting tired. From high up. Yeah. He's, getting he's, getting he's picking the steam's coming out of his punches. Yeah. 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 Listen to me, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Throw it from the hands up high so they come out faster. Which one? I want both hands up high. Both up high. Let those hands go. Okay. Walk in with the jab and let the left hand go. Deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. Don't let him Here's the body shot. It was a shot like that that ended the fight against Virgil Hill later in the round. A winging right hand landed high on the cheekbone. Didn't do a lot of damage. Let's go. Round seven begins. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through six? Six to nothing. 60 to 54, Roy Jones Jr. Jim, I wanted to say the last time before that action heated up that I think the reason Roy Jones went southpaw was definitely because Louis Del Valle would come in where Roy Jones would be squared up right in front of him. Good, Louis comes good, in but good him. shot by Duval. And, and in order to get away from Louis Buttonham, he went southpaw. Duval actually believed that Roy Jones is tired. I think you may be on to something there, Harold, and I think you are too, George, as Duval suddenly awakens to new aggression. Ooh. Body shots. And Duval beginning to ask referee Jim Santa for a little help against the body shots, and you heard Santa say, no, it was right there. Jones going back to the body, pumping the left hand. This referee, Santa, was scheduled to be the referee of the heavyweight championship fight between Evander Holyfield and Henry Akinwande that was canceled here June 6th. The ball's going to have trouble punching if he jumps in the air every time Roy hits him in the body, George. Yeah, that punch will make you jump. He believes that the punches are going too low. The ball does. The referee seems not to think as much. Time, time, give me a towel. Time. Give time now to try to wipe a wet spot in the ring. So, yeah, Santa was going to do Holyfield back in one day before that cancellation. Time it. Let's go. Therefore, it's appropriate that he gets to do the next big fight here in New York, and this is it. The 
Duvall has got something we got to point out. He's got willpower. He gets beat up, but he still maintains the aggression. Jones's right hand landed on the shoulder. And Roy back in his conventional stance, but still with that unconventional game out of it. Roy just strafing Del Valle's belly with body shots. Yeah, and if he lands too many more of those, Del Valle is going to go down because of them. But Del Valle just confidence. missed with the left over the top and got butted in the eye. So their heads do come together, and it's Lou Duvall who pays the price. Uh, he has cut many times before. I, I thought I saw Roy sort of apologize to him. It obviously was not a deliberate fight, but this fight will not go on more than another round or two with a cut like that, it appears. Well, you, you heard Harold Letterman saying that he thought Roy had switched southpaw to avoid that kind of butting. They were in the normal configuration with Deval fighting southpaw, Roy in his conventional stance, and boom, the heads came together. As had been the case once back in round number two, before Roy went to the southpaw stance. Accidental button. Stay together and listen to Joe. Al Gavin, listen one of the Joe. very best cutmen alive, yes. going to work for Lou Duvall. Well, he's going to have to do as good a job as he's ever done before in an eye to make this one work. Looks like a very, very bad cut. I know. I got it. Okay. Watch those low balls, man. This is Judd, Doc. Do your magic there, Al. Well, let's take a look at the butt, Larry. Now, there you see, left-hander against the right-hander. They both start to throw punches and come in at the same time. Result, blood on the floor, blood on the eye. One of the unfortunate realities of the sport. All right, Harold, now we're past the midway point of the fight. What happens if the bout is stopped because of that cut? Jim, beyond the fourth round, under the rules of the Association of Boxing Commissioners, if this fight is stopped because of that cut, we go to the scorecards. Whoever's ahead on the scorecards wins. They don't deduct any points, you know, for, from uncut guys or anything like that, but they will go to the scorecards in case the fight is stopped. You know, uh, on account of that uh, accidental headbutt. And just to reaffirm, your scorecard's still a shutout, right? Absolutely. Seven rounds to nothing, 70 to 63. So Jones is in a good position if they stop the fight. And in the last round, Duvall only threw 21 punches. That's after he threw 15 punches in the round before. He just hasn't been able to mount a consistent attack against Jones's body assault. Well, his hope was, as I suggested earlier, Jim, frustrate Roy Jones. Hope that he's in better shape and make something happen in the second fight. Doesn't look like that's going to work. He has to throw everything, all caution out, and try to get get some damage in. Make something happen here very quickly. Good body punch again. The ball literally cringing when Jones comes at him with the right hand to the body. That Jones is going to faint that right, uh, straight uh, right hand pretty soon and go straight up top. And he won't have any problem landing it. You know, I don't remember before the Virgil Hill fight, Roy Jones throwing an awful lot of body punches, but he has suddenly discovered it and has fallen in love with the idea of throwing body punches. Once you see those kind of returns, you have to go back to it. Well, you know, he really developed a respect for Mike McCallum when he fought McCallum and spent time with McCallum before the fight. Maybe McCallum, one of the great body punchers in the last 25 years in the sport, said to him, Roy, your life would be so much easier if you do what I do. <laughs> Good left hand by Deval. He never before knocked down. Roy Jones cleanly knocked down on a straight left by Lou Deval. That's the hardest punch I've ever seen Roy Jones take. Deval is desperate, trying to make something happen, as we said earlier. He hurt Roy Jones. He's been thinking all night, Roy Jones is getting tired. He, though he was being hurt, he kept the confidence that 
this guy is running out of steam. Well, and he's only lost. Deval knocked down Virgil Hill with a straight left hand. Now in trouble against Roy Jones. He produces knockout light or knock, knockdown lightning again. Now Roy Jones is doing an excellent job of holding on. There's nothing wrong with holding on. It's professional, right? Yeah, you go to your corner now. That stool should be in the corner before he gets there. Now Val earned the applause of his fans with that tremendous punch. What a More shot. Than a tremendous a punch. Give me the what a shot. Come on here. Just a devastating okay. left hand. All right. A slam dunk. Just keep your hand. Here comes the knockdown. Roy turned his head, as you saw. Never had an idea the punch was coming because his head was turned away. Watch his, watch him turn away right there. This is what happened when you get hit by a light heavyweight. He was a heavyweight by this, by this time. You know, we've often asked, what would Roy Jones do if he ever got in trouble, if he ever really got hurt? Perhaps we have a chance to see it tonight. Well, as, as George pointed out, he showed the professionalism of knowing how to stop the clock, in effect, and hold on to get out of the round. Then he came back to the corner with triumphant body language. Let's see if he can go back to doing what he was doing. Now he's going to have to use this jab, respect this guy, because that extra weight, DeVal has something left in these last few rounds. Well, and we showed you DeVal put on 17 pounds since the weigh-in and came here tonight at 192, eight pounds more than Jones, who weighed 184. Aha, uh -huh. there's a wet spot there, and that is exactly the spot at which Jones went down. Not to say that it wasn't a great punch by Duvall, but there is a wet spot. No, Jim, it's on the far side of the ring, over there. Let's go. I don't think they got the wet spot. And the, the wet spots are going to affect Roy Jones most because he's spreading his legs so far apart and expecting to be able to jump up and move. And also, he's the one that's making the, the ring wet. Look at the look at the water dripping from his trunks, Jim. Harold, wet spot comment. Okay, Jim, look. All the is soaking Roy Jones down in between rounds. I mean, he came out with those trunks soaking. The executive director of the State Athletic Commission, Tony Russo, is in the corner right now with Alton Murkison chewing him out. The reason they're slipping is because is Jones has got so much water in those trunks that it's dripping off. There's water all over the ring, and they're slipping on the wet spots. Tony Russo has given it to Alton Murkison with both barrels right now. Well done, Harold. Russo thought his hardest job tonight was going to be to clear the ring before the referee's instructions. There's that slippery ring again affecting Roy Jones. The bow should be working his jab, working his jab, forgetting everything else, that punch will come again. Jones going back to work in straight rights and not to the body now. He's going right at Lou Duvall's bruised and bleeding left eye. Gavin must have run some job on that eye to keep DelVal in the fight. And Roy Jones has not exploited it up to now. He has not tried to land one shot on that eye, which I think is really professional. He, he wanted to win, and he wanted to win easily. Didn't want to go for a cut. There are a handful of brilliant cut men in the sport. You saw the miracle that Joe Souza put together with Arturo Gatti here in the garden a couple of years ago against Wilson Rodriguez. Souza's one of them. Gavin is certainly another. dealt with the knockdown by being just a little bit more cautious. All right, we're going to the 10. Don't worry about trying to hit this taker with no big shot. Let's hit him with a lot of small shots. He took some good shots, okay? 
Put the towel on the shoulders, man. On the shoulder. Okay. I'm ahead again. I'm ahead he got. Again. He got you. He got you. I'm good. Okay. This one, we got three more rounds. This one, we got to get about them big shots. Just touch them up. Hit it, Joe. 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 Hit it, Joe.
Let him run. Let him run. Whatever space you want, man. Get all okay. the space. Get all the space. Okay, pull all the stuff. Let's go. Okay, wipe it down. Wipe it down. Good job. I don't think okay, I've ever seen a corner okay, do a better job okay, on an eye right, because guys, that go. was really, really an ugly cut. It was a deep cut. Well, we've covered Gavin with glory and deservedly so for the work he's done in keeping Lou Duvall in the fight. And remember, the knockdown occurred after the cut. And you know, the stoppage of the action Fix really benefits go. Roy Jones. I don't know why they don't get there and, right. and Let's go. tie that glove up and keep it tied. Come on. Come on. Taped up correctly. Every time they have to stop in action, Roy Jones refreshes himself. And you don't want a Roy Jones refreshed. You know, early on in the fight, Roy was trying to put some serious hurt on... Delval, we heard that rap song, the KO in two rounds. It appears now that he is satisfied to go home with the victory. If he gets a big opening, he might take it, but he's not pressing the point anymore. And surely the Deval contingent will lobby for a rematch. Oh, maybe not. Straight right hand landed for Jones, and another delay. This one may have helped Deval. Well, those delays should have refreshed Roy Jones, I'm telling you. Let's go. Every time a delay comes, Roy Jones gets a little energy. Uh, okay, time in. That's Let's the go. fifth delay I count. Roy's unorthodox style, given DelVal's left-handed style. Same punch that knocked him down a moment ago, he gets caught with again. And you're right, he still hasn't adjusted his defense. you got to adjust your defense, you just can't go to your corner and your, your corner agrees with you. you got to give you some kind of instruction. But just as DeVal has been able to land hard lefts, Jones is able to come back with hard rights. The ball jumping off the canvas to try to protect himself against body shots. <laughs> Which is why. <wise. laughs> I haven't seen you do that, George. The day I see you jumping off the canvas. <laughs> the day you see me jump. <laughs> you think he's trying to make the body punch land low by jumping up over it? Well, it throws Roy Jones off. It's like a moving target. Roy Jones is trying to mix it up, but this does not benefit Roy Jones to mix it up with this big guy. This guy has shown that he has power. It's a matter of just picking that right hand up and just putting it on the opposite side of your face. You don't get caught anymore. Look up, Louie. Come on, Roy. Get your arms back. That's it, fellas. Good job. Good job. Okay, no punches, no punches. Step back. This okay. has been another low activity round for Duval, with the exception of the one hard straight left hand that he landed. Hasn't had a chance to throw many punches. Come on, Come on let go. Jones with a much bigger punch output and landing consistently with straight right hand. Step back, step back, corner. Well, I don't think Roy Jones Jr. expected to go 12 rounds tonight. No, I think he came out as RJ early in the fight, but he's Roy Jones at this point in the fight. I thought you slipped. I did kind of slip, but you did. It was a good damn shot. Who's war? I want to hear again. Use those hands. Water, water. Use those hands. All right. Hands up. Use them. When you're getting off, he's, he's backing up. Right, right. Okay? Use them. Okay. Down, you you heard him before. You'll do it again. Water, Victor. Victor, walk him. Come on, lady. Come on. Let's get it. Shit. All right. Let him go. 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 
the Val is in the position that David Reed was in during the Olympics, hoping that one big punch can turn around the result. Wealth of a scheduled 12. Lou Duvall needs a big left hand to score the upset victory over Roy Jones. Jones needs to hope that he's not going to be victimized by a hometown garden side decision against him. But these are WBC judges, not New York judges. Jones taking a lot of chances, he's been a little extra courteous. Anything can happen in a, in a minute, in two minutes. Duvall's corner told him, you got that straight left hand over earlier, you can do it again. Watch it, watch it. Watch your head, Lou. Lily, watch your head, come on. Come on, let go. Let's watch, let go, Roy. come on, Roy. Well, whatever else he gets out of this fight, guys, he'll be able to relive that knockdown of Roy Jones for the rest of his life. Man, it was like a slam dunk. Body slam, I mean. First time Jones has ever been knocked down in a professional fight. And he's halfway now to Oscar De La Hoya's total. De La Hoya's been knocked down twice, much earlier in his career. And Duval can boast. I had him down, and did I have him down good? I had him down in New York in front of all my buddies. <laughs> well, this will be a moral victory for Del Val in his hometown because of the high expectations anytime Ray Jones comes into the ring because of his reputation as the best fighter in the world south of the heavyweight division. This is not what he wanted to do in 42 seconds left. Well, because of their unorthodox styles, George, it's almost like two guys trying to converse in different languages sometimes. They just sort of fall all over each other. Yeah, it's happening over and over. A couple of rounds ago, you heard Cutman Al Gavin tell Lou Duvall, it's okay, you're still going to be a movie star and a world champion with two belts. Well, maybe he'll be a movie star. You never know about these judges. You gotta win these boxing matches. You gotta win them with the guy on the canvas. Well, Roy well, Jones walking. is closing the show. Bivol apparently too exhausted to do much in the last couple minutes of that round. The tall gentleman talking to Lou Delval, that's Al Gavin, the cut man who heroically kept the ball in the fight and gave him his chance to knock Roy Jones down. Harold Letterman, your final scorecard. Chin, 118, 109, 11 rats to one, Roy Jones Jr. I just thought, you know, the, the story is he had punched him. I mean, he's just too great an athlete, but uh, it certainly was, uh, you know, a Rocky One story for Louis Del Valle. He went the distance. Nobody thought he'd go the distance. Uh, it, amazing that he takes such a great punch, you know? And, I mean, I thought Roy did, you know, most of his shtick for us. I like that walk-away move that he stole from Jersey Joe Walkout. He walks away, turns around and whacks him. Uh, the shuffling of the feet. I mean, I think we saw it all tonight. Just about the wobbling of the knees. I, I mean, he did everything to Louis Del Valley but shoe shine him. So, Roy Jones with a decisive victory. You got a big laugh from George, Harold. And no, I'm because sure he was telling it like it is. There are millions at home having just as good a time as you're having, George. Highlights of the fight. In early action, Roy Jones was able to dominate with greater punch output. He landed straight right hands. He went to a conventional stance and landed left crosses out of that conventional stance. He landed the right upstairs and downstairs and dominated through rounds three, four, five, and six with stylish action like that. 
right hands to the body, lifting Duval off the canvas. Then in the seventh round, the unfortunate moment when their heads came together and the horrible cut that ensued over Duval's left eye. And then in the eighth round, Roy Jones knocked down for the first time ever on a straight left hand from Duval that landed right on the button. But Jones was able to come back from that and get the better of his man in the closing rounds. And we'll now see if the judges saw it the way we did. Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the Budweiser scorecards. Fred Ucci scores the belt 118 to 109. Marty Denkin has it 118 to 109. And Dwayne Ford scores it 119 to 108 for the winner who is now the unified WBC, WBA light heavyweight champion of the world. And he is Roy Jones Jr. So it turns out to be a lopsided unanimous decision as one judge has it even more one-sidedly than Harold did. Harold did a great job this time. Harold called this number. Well, Harold always does a great job, George. Sometimes the other guys don't go as good a job. <laughs> I knew him when he was young and he was doing a good job, but this is a Harold, great job. you don't think he's still young? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. By your standards, he is. <laughs> <laughs> so Jones celebrating. <laughs> I deserve that. You doggone right you did. I heard you were going to fight somebody when you were 50, but I don't know. <laughs> Final punch stat numbers. Jones landing 233 out of 483. Deval 113 out of 286. And it's as simple as that. That's the reason why Jones won a lopsided decision on the final scorecards, particularly the body punching with the right hand. Very effective throughout the fight. He had his old friend Mullins to come in and help him. He knew, yeah, he had he uh, Keith knew, Mullins, the 154-pound world champion, that this fight sparred with him getting ready for the fight. And uh, you can see that Jones threw 132 jabs. I wonder how many were southpaw jabs thrown with the right hand and how many were conventional staff ja or stance jabs with the left hand. Probably pretty evenly split. Good jab landing percentage for Jones at 43%. Tough to do that against a southpaw. Let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Roy. You got more belts than Saks Fifth Avenue hanging on you tonight. But that was, well, you describe it. You wanted to go out there and get him quickly, but he was very tough to get. Well, I really wasn't going to be here. First of all, let's take time out. Thank God for giving me everything I got. Oh, and still the baddest man on the planet. But you know, that's why I don't want to fight sparring partners. Sparring partners know you. Eventually, they've learned enough where they can catch up with you and catch you with something good. They caught with a good shot, but I'm a true champion. I won't stop. I won't quit my heart. Right, everybody goal. wanted to see how Roy Jones was going to deal with some kind of adversity one of these days, and you finally had it when he knocked you down. What was that like for you? I was shocked. I was like, dang, that's a real good shot. You know, I looked at the shot. Boom, we caught with a good left hand. I said, oh, my goodness, that's a good shot. And uh, my foot really slid off from under me. And I said, okay, you know, I'll take this. I've been knocked down. You know, I'll take that. That's the first, first time for everything. I kind of expect something like that to happen when you fight a sparring partner because sparring partners know so much about you. That's why I always vowed to myself I would never fight a sparring partner. But when it comes down to showing the world who's the best pound for pound, you know, I had to go out and do my thing. He had something I wanted. I don't have a WBA belt in my collection. Now I do. What? How did that feel? I mean, were, were you hurt? Were you buzzed? It was a stunning shot. You know, then it have you just, you know, it's like a flash knockdown. You get days. And actually, believe it or not, I had a premonition of that. I said I was probably going to get knocked down in this fight because he knew me so well and I said watch if I get like, like a days ago I might get knocked down. And I remember just saying that no matter what happens when you get knocked down get up and keep fighting with all your heart. You know the kid knows you but you got the biggest heart in boxing you the man. Keep going and that's what I did. Early in the fight you switched to southpaw. Why? Because I knew he knew my right hand stuff too well. So I turned southpaw out confused him a lot. I put a lot on his mind. It will be something that he's not used to seeing. It was a confidence killer. It killed his confidence to see me come out there and turn southpaw. Uh, when, when he was cut, when your heads collided, it would look like a really bad cut. It looked like the fight could not go on very long, especially if you would try to exploit it, but you never seemed to go after it. No, I wasn't going to try to go after the cut because one of the cut would cause you to run into a big shot. You know what I'm saying? If I, uh, I would have got anxious and overreacted, I ran right into something big. I ran into a big shot anyway, just underestimating him, thinking that he was about out of there, you know. And uh, it happens that way. But you can never go out a guy just because he's bleeding. He's desperate. He's more dangerous then than he is when he's clean. I knew he was going to be dangerous, so I just said, look, don't worry about that. Press him. Keep the pressure on you. win the round. you win the round. You'll you, you lose that round, but you win the fight. Having 
finally been caught with a big shot and been knocked down, does it make you feel, okay, I'm a prize fighter, I've showed I can deal with anything that shows up in the ring? You know what, I've been dealing with adversity all my life, you know what I'm saying? All my life, I've been dealing with adversity, you know what I'm saying? From Seoul, the show that tonight, I said, why something happens to me tonight to carry me back to that? But I'm going to show after this why I'm who I am. Seoul Olympic made me who I am. You saw that loss, they knocked me down, I came back. You saw this, this knockdown tonight, what am I going to quit? I'm the best thing that ever happened here, you know what I'm saying? I'm a fighter, I'm a true fighter, God bless me with talent, and I'm going to come out here and use that talent to be all I can be. Thank you very much, Roy Jones. Jones. Oh, oh, himself. Oh, hey, you feel the man, you know what I'm saying? We all right, the man. Jim, what Roy is really saying is that it was Pensacola 2 and New York nothing tonight. We saw some of Roy Jones, some of RJ, the bad Roy Jones, and we saw a pretty good Lou Delval give his best in his hometown. Jim? All right, next up in the pound-for-pound -pound sweepstakes, Oscar De La Hoya scheduled to take on Julio Cesar Chavez on September 18. Prince Nassim Hamed may be closing in on a possible date with Kennedy McKinney October 30. And Evander Holyfield appears for now to have turned down yet another offer to fight Lennox Lewis. We'll have a final word on what happened here in the ring in just a moment. Let's look ahead to some upcoming programs on HBO.